Hi, it's um, this is Mark Jayakuriva in my in my flat, um, and way out of my comfort zone. Uh, so far, the only place I've um, uh, put these lives out has been in my garden, and uh, because that's where I'm at home when I'm in nature. So, so um, yes, here I am. I'm feeling a little bit out on my limb. Also, I'm just back from a, a, an amazing retreat. Um, yes, and um, yes, I might uh, get to incorporate some of what I've tuned into over that time. And yes, um, yes, and, and I've got Black Cat here, of course, uh, come to console me with my um, uh, uh, being outside of my comfort zone. So, um, hopefully. I'll settle into this in a, in a little while. I can see there's uh, four people watching. Uh, do drop a comment to say hi, so I know who you are. And if you have any questions, um, uh, please um, put them on the screen. There's a time delay, so um, I'll be chatting for a little bit whilst I wait for um, inquiries to come in. So, what to say? Well, um, this uh, going live thing has, um, ah, oh, hi Kishore, hi Abigail Miller, nice to see you um, Yes, this, this going live thing has, um, well, it's changed my relationship to Facebook actually. Um, I used to have quite a bit of uh, difficulty with the thing, but uh, now, now um, I can use it. Hi John, nice to see you again. Uh, now, now I feel I can use it to um, do the thing that I always want to do, which is basically spread and share um, my insights and work um, with the world. And um, uh, this platform allows me to do, do so for free. So this is why I'm here. Hi, Jill. Nice to see you. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Well, I'll. I'll, I'll Yes, I hope you enjoy it. We can catch up later. So, any questions for those of you that have arrived? Um, from, you, from those of you that have arrived. Now, help me teach, because um, I always teach from where I'm at, really. Um, but also from uh, who I'm with. Because uh, I, I think that's the point. You know? um, the yoga is supposed to. Um, be in direct response to um, what is. That's the that's the basic principle. Um, but if you if you if you're into Patanjali sutras or any kind of any kind of yoga texts, um, it also is the same stuff. And it's basically the job is to turn up to the present moment um, from a quiet place, from the, from the heart. So it's a good idea. And in doing so, um, what is revealed is something along the lines of the truth. And um, the, the truth of uh, your higher self, or um, perhaps your purpose in life, I don't know. But uh, you turn up to something that's a bit more in tune with uh, the reality of who you are rather than. Um, any sort of mental construct um, that's based on other influences, perhaps. So, um, <clears throat> I, I personally think that goes for teaching as well. So, rather than turning up with some agenda um, to share with you um, or to impose upon you, I like to respond to what is there. So, um, if you have any questions, uh, please. Do drop me a comment and I will do I can to respond. Hi Jane, nice to see you. Um, I, I'll see you direct on Skype in, in half an hour, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So where am I at? Well, changed really. Uh, I did this amazing retreat with my lovely partner Abigail and um, involved a lot of meditation and a lot of. Um, Facing up to uh, what's going on in the inner stories of things, and the the practice. 
Well, uh, 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 what I was thinking about today, actually, was uh, I was about this word energy. Um, my, I had a mini practice before this, didn't have much time, so I could get my thoughts up. But um, yes, energy. Um, I, I've sort of avoided using the word. You seem to have lost me. Um, I, uh, okay, John. Um, as in, I, can anyone else hear me okay? Am I still live? Can I get a yes from someone? It might be your, it might be your Wi-Fi, John. Um, so, where was I? Oh, hi, Alan. Um, <clears throat> okay. What was I saying? Yes, I was thinking about the term energy. And uh, yes, please, um, if, you get a, if you get a question, um, do write it up as soon as you can, because it takes a while. It takes a while to come through, okay? Um, whilst I'm sharing with you where I'm at. Um, yes, uh, uh, the, the meditation we're working on it involves a lot of um, inverted commas energy work. And um, <clears throat> I have avoided um, this term, along with other traditional yoga terms like I'm talking about chakras and channels and that sort of thing. Um, for, 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 for this reason, um, what I witness is um, that it's very easy to imagine how you need best to see. So it's very easy to um, take your awareness to an idea and impose that idea on your somatic experience of things. Um, <clears throat> and this is what I see a lot of. Um, it, and it's, it's not, that's not such a bad thing, you know? it's, it's okay. But when, when a sort of projected imagination is there in place of a, a potential real live experience, then what you're doing is you're sort of cutting yourself off from the actual reality that is here and now in this space, uh, in this body. So, you know, my emphasis has always been about um, true embodiment of the principles of yoga. And uh, now if, you, if you treat chakras as a somatic experience, a description of a somatic experience, you can, you can locate them. Um, you can locate them through rhythms of breathing, through the um, central, through a central expansion that arrives with the arrival of the breath, and through a, 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 a sort of dissolving into the centre of some part of you, with the release of the breath, and, and that centre would be the vortex of something that is described as the um, centre of the chakra. I would guess. I, would guess. Um, I don't like to define these things intellectually. Um, I don't like to look at um, maps of where they're supposed to be because they're, they're, um, they're just that, they're maps, and they're maps built out of imagination as well as from somatic experience. So um, the moment that there's going to be a more accurate way of understanding what's going on in terms of energy. Um, I personally think there is no difference, actually, between what is termed as energy and what is actually really going on with the cells, the atoms, the molecules, the, the, the sense of movements of pressure and release, the sense of support, uh, the freedoms that happen with the sense of support, the ease and the flow of uh, blood and fluid, all these things that are actually going on, are accessible to our sensibilities, to our, to our sensitivities, to different levels. And um, <clears throat> one of the reasons I avoid using the word energy because, is because it is often used as a reason to not look for a direct sensation, to not look for the practical reality of what is being talked about. Um, yeah. A bit, because if you, if you can embody these things in, in a real way, and it involves not being out of the body, um, but being in this body, relating to your earth, 
relating to this space, then what you get to do is, is, is align the physical with the natural flow of things as they would be if everything was in perfect harmony. And uh, that sudden arrival of flow, I would imagine, is what people are talking about when they're talking about the chakras waking up or the energy moving. Um, I think that is what it's meant. So, so my, my thing, um, yes, my thing is how do, how do I bring this heaven stuff to earth? And I think that's my mission in life, actually. And that, that became pretty clear over this retreat. I've just come back from. So um, I still I still don't have any questions from anyone. Uh, I can't really teach any yoga until I get a, a subject to teach, because I, um, otherwise um, I'm just talking about myself. You know, I would like to have something to work with that you're interested in. So please do um, drop me a line to say what you're currently interested in looking at. And I'll talk a little bit about it and um, then we'll find something practical to do. Um, oh, I forgot to set my timer, so I'll do that while I'm waiting. Um, I need to set it for I'm trying to now. I need to set it for 15 or 20 minutes. Ah, thank you, Kishori. You've got a question for me. Let's see. Let's not put this up. I'm always exploring my legs, so my experience on the mat is release and my practice a lot. However, I'm walking more in the spring, a car. So it seems as if I have more stress. I rarely manage to move to standing from sitting. So walking in that pain, I want to move every day. In Walking in yoga. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yes. How do we? How do we take the freedoms that we discover in our practice into practical functionality? Practical function. It's um uh, that question. That question that is. Possibly the best question you can ask, because the, the point of um, point of practicing isn't to have a place to retreat to from the world, from um, life. The purpose of practicing is to be able to take what you discover, the freedoms and integrations that you discover, into life, and it starts with learning how to get up off the ground um, and stand and then it needs to be taken into walking so you know yoga practice needs needs to incorporate these things in a real way it might slow it might, you might just slow it down but then the practice is to uh, bring uh, the relationships that you are developing into natural function. Uh, in my terminology, this is condition four. Um, first, first of all, you have to be able to tune into what's actually going on. And um, in order to do so, you need to uh, release tension, you need to let go, you need to trust your support, and um, possibly start well, realize that it is your engagement with your support that determines whether you're supported or not. Mm -hmm. That's the first line of inquiry. That's the first condition that needs to be attended to. The, the, the ability to let go of tension and so you can sense what you're doing. The second thing that you need to attend to is space. Uh, space within in relationship to the space without. So where you are in space um, as well, proprioception. And this, so we start to relate between parts of ourselves. Because uh, your experience of where you are and how you feel 
it's not only to do with how you're supported down here in the earth and the touch, but also um, my feeling of support is determined by where this thing is in relationship to my base. Uh, when I have more distance between those things, then I have more space. And um, so the second inquiry needs to be about between things in space. That's the second layer of conditions that you need to attend to. The third layer that needs to be attended to is how to integrate the down with the up. How to integrate being in space and being with the earth. And, and the answer to that is about centering. It, it's about coming back, pulling, reeling in your aura, if you like, reeling, reeling in the way you occupy space, um, not reaching outside yourself for the solution, but finding the center of what you're doing. And relating to heaven and earth, earth from there. But then the yoga begins because we start to be able to practice integration. Now, the trick, and the, the thing that will be the answer to your question, Shari, is how to bring this third thing, this relationship, this integration, into rhythmic natural natural rhythmic daily moment by moment breath by breath practice and um generally speaking um the my fourth condition this this fourth condition of how to naturalize integrated relationships tends to go a little more with the out breath simply because uh, the thing that we're trying to do is to move from the center and um, although um, the inflation of the breath does can be a central experience that expands you in space. Um, the return to the center that happens with the outbreath gives you more of a possibility of engaging between heaven and earth in an integrated fashion. Uh, because um, simply because of the mechanics of how the how the how the release of the breath works, it brings you into a heart, essentially, it brings you into the center of the dorsal spine, which needs to be the backbone of your movement. Um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's quite a heady thing for most people to understand this, but uh, I'm trying to get you to tune in to um, that the, there is a natural order of things to attend to if you want to make a difference. Because um, what I am guessing is what happens for you, uh, Kishori, is you, you find an integration in practice lying down on the floor. And you find uh, ways of using the legs and engaging with the hands and feet and the breath and from the spine and from the heart uh, through your touch and the space. But then the task of getting up is a step away from that integration. Um, and at some point during the integration, it could be habitual um, responses, it could be uh, fear of habitual responses. Uh, which will be there to protect you when you move without integration, um, that take you away from the relationships which you need when you get to standing. So it's all going to disappear um, unless the very relationships that you discover on the floor when you are without conflict, when you, when you feel supported, when you can play with space in, a, in an open and heart-centered way, those relationships, just in the thought of getting up, will probably fall away. Because getting up equals the sequence of events that you're familiar with. So this is the discipline of it. How do I use, how do I use the very things that I discover when I'm in my practice to move to another place? And that's the condition for it. That's the naturalization of practice. So let's um, let's think of something to to do to to play with this. So I think it's going to be just lying down to standing up. So I'm trying to angle the camera 
So it's a bit higher up and I'll be on my mat. In case I do get round to standing. Okay. Let's see. Mm. Uh, from the height. Yeah, that'll do. Um, okay, so I think you can just uh, see me. Mm. I hope you can still hear me, but um, if the microphone is working, then you will. So let's say we, we've done a reclining practice of some kind, and uh, if you, if you join me, lie, lie down. Um, I'll try and instruct so you don't have to look at the camera, if possible. Um, so the, the first point, uh, I only have 10 minutes, so I won't go into too much detail. The first thing is, say we're arriving in practice, and I'd like you to arrive in touch with the earth, contact with the earth in a sort of equal fashion. So playing with how the feet arrive and how they support you. And I can support you when you put them down. Playing with how the pelvis arrives, and if you can let go of tension inside the belly, then, then the spine will be involved in how the pelvis can support you when you, when you touch the ground feet. Now, between those things, you can make it back in how the how the ribs and the back and the release back through the shoulders can support you from as you arrive in the back and the upper back and the ground. And finally, and not least, how the head can arrive as a neutral structure on the ground and how it can be used to support you. So between all points of contact, you should be able to um, move between them and eventually arrive in something of a So from here, just as you are, I have my hands up in the air and they're, they're clasped and gently as a place of support. Back to the place I can support myself from. So, so from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from the heart. Make your touch even, make it kind. And then, this is the practice, you ground when you breathe. So you, you, you land on your base as equally as possible. You place the spine up the back head. Ground and breathe. And until you find, and that could be with the release of the breath, a, a sacred place, a central place. And this is the key for you, to show you. A sacred central place inside your touch, the center of all space. Imagine yourself in a um, spherical field, if you like, that you are occupying, that you can, you can breathe into from your touch. And as you release the breath, the center of this sphere is where you return to, and that can be somewhere inside of the body, somewhere along the front of the spine. A central place, a sacred place, central place inside your touch and central all space where you can just let go. Make touch even, make it kind, ground and breathe until you find a sacred place inside your touch, the center of this space. Just look. Okay. Now, um, pick up the feet, and you do that with the feet, not the hips. So scrunch up the toes. Imagine you're going to feed yourself with the feet, a monkey with a banana. And then uh, we'll help you bring the knees towards you and, and just um, touch the hands and knees together. And have the knees touching the hands as much as the hands are touching the knees. If you get that equation, it will be light, and you should have some steady, steady support that comes back into the middle. And this is physical. It's um, it's something that happens. If it doesn't happen, then you need to do it. Um, 
the, the centralization of what you're doing is a gathering in that happens with the outbreak. And I would suggest right now, um, you try and press the kidneys and the family a bit with the knees up. And you should find a tightening and gathering in around the lower front ribs and the upper belly. Now, for most people that would restrict breathing, but if you breathe into the space behind you, so you press the ground through the head, the middle back, you know, not so much the upper back. And imagine receiving the breath from that engagement, then you should find a, a central strength that stays with you. If you do, the limbs will not be so heavy, and it won't be so chaotic for the spine as you roll from side to side. So you'll have a sense of central support that is doing both the touch through the head, uh, whatever part of the back is on the ground, and the hips. It's a pressing engagement that um, allows you to breathe into the space behind you. And when you release the breath, the same pressing helps you gather into your center, leaving the limbs light and free. See? And there's no rush to get to the ground. It's, it's just the point is to be centered and expanded in all directions. From that centralization. Now we're going to take it into um, getting up. So if you, let's say, roll onto the right hand side, the knees might travel first to keep centralization going. And when you arrive on your right hand side, the left hand touches the ground and you use whatever other content you have in the shoulder and arm to help yourself come into the hand. You might notice my, my top leg tends to extend away from me as I do that. So from lying on your back, curled up with a centralized action going on, it means there's a couple of minutes left. From lying on my back, rolling over onto the right hand side, using your touch as you arrive with the arm, with the leg, you know, the top leg growing away from you, using your touch to support you. And then using your left hand as it arrives to help you up. And I would practice that several times with the idea of staying centered in this um, solar plexus kind of area, because it's the um, this would be the sort of physical structure that would support uh, that people refer to in terms of core support. Um, and when this central structure is relating to your use of your limbs, then uh, the body doesn't weigh so much. It's not so much a superficial push in the arms, you see? So you arrive, um, I'll be more on the camera here. So you've arrived on the left hand and on the legs in a sort of sideways sitting position. The next job is to keep going. So from there, onto your knees. So from there, onto your knees. And it's a nice circular movement. And, and you, you don't just do it. You know? You've got to find the flow, the rhythmic flow. And because we're looking to um, find support in the middle, then what you do is you do it as you breathe out. So relax, breathe in, when you're sort of half sitting up. And as you breathe out, the gathering in, in the middle, is the center of what you're doing, which is putting the hands down and supporting yourself onto the knee. And as the hands go down, the knee that's in front can come off the ground, and you can bring it round to line up with the wrist. So from sitting on your side, take a breath. As you release the breath, onto the knee. Okay, so it will be the right knee if we turn to the right, and the other knee can come in place. So now here we are, our hands and knees. And the temptation is to rush it, especially since um, my Facebook Live is supposed to be finished soon. But um, stay with this feeling of breathing behind you as if there was something to push, because if you go into heaviness, you'll lose that central support. So breathing behind you, if there's something to support with your head, with your middle back perhaps, and even with the base of the spine, if you press back, you should find that there is both space to breathe and central support, particularly as you release the breath, because that 
will happen in the middle. When, when you get clear about that, so it's officially the end of the session, um, I'm going to carry on for a little while. When you get clear about that feeling of from the centre to your hands and from the centre to your knees in this case, then you can transfer that by rocking from hands to feet. Hands to feet. With the release of the breath. Hands to feet. With the release of the breath. You have to trust your knees for that to be possible. So what you can do is when you're on your hands, you can just use that to see if the knees can become light by being through the feet. If that happens, you should, if, if, if things are lined up nicely, you should be able to just rest your weight over the heels. The breathing in preparation and then with the wrist breath centralizing and landing on the feet. You can walk your hands closer. Now the next part, you can still see, because I'm in mind good. The next part is from squatting to forward bend. And rather than pushing your legs down, pushing your heels down, which hurts the muscles around the knees and it causes a bit of strain, your hands are there. Breathe behind you again. If, you, if you're lifting, you'll be in stress already. So try and be relaxed. Breathe into the space behind you as if it's a surface. So the middle back and the head and, possibly, and also the base of the spine. If you do that, then if you keep doing it as you release the breath, something centralised will happen. And in that moment, if you give the weight to the hands, you can sort of relax the legs open. So you give the weight back to the feet. You can try it a few times. So breathing, in preparation, releasing the breath from the centre by gathering to the centre. Give that to the hands, let the legs relax open. A little bit of out through the toes will help the action. And then the heels, um, with the help of the hands, you can send your weight back so that the heels can drop away from you. So that's the next part is from the hands. Take a breath, widen now for you. So as well as the space behind you, you meet the space at the side. And there's a breath called Sikai that you're familiar with, Kishori. Um, you get a stronger response. Those of you who are not used to working with me, you can stick out your tongue when you breathe out. I'll do something similar. So when the middle is kicked in, because it does, and you're on your hands, and you can use your hands to land the weight on the feet. You can move from hands to feet. And as you practice the weight being released down away from you, and what you're actually doing, instead of, instead of pulling your weight down and being heavy, you release the heels down away from you, what you're actually doing is resting into the surface behind you. So once again, if you find yourself in forward bend, resting with the weight most on the feet, you can start to trust the space behind you, including the legs, back of the waist, base of the spine, back of the head, behind the heart. You breathe those places, and then when you release the breath, the landing on the feet, the landing through the heels, you can imagine gravity pulling through your heels to help you stand up, breath by breath. Breathing behind you, and then this centralized experience of the release of the breath. A centralized experience of the release of the breath through your touch. Through your touch. And if we can sustain the centralized experience of touch, then when you move, when you put your weight, it's not a collapse of the weight. It's a decision to stand on this earth from the center. So take a breath, and then the, right, the left foot goes down, right foot can become light. The heel extends forwards, not because you plonk your weight forwards, but because you are meeting the space behind you once the, once the left foot has gone down. So take a breath behind you, the left foot goes down, you meet the space behind that left leg so you can place the right heel in front of you. Take a breath behind you wide, and as you release the breath from the, back to the center, that central action allows you to place the foot down, little toe edge, ball with the foot. So that that foot goes down. When that foot goes down on the release of the breath, you're in a position to use the space behind your right leg 
behind you to propel, to support yourself as you reach forward to the left heel. When the left heel is there, the knee is behind you. And then when you, from the central, from the central experience of the racing plan, connected to that touch, and place the rest of the foot down, look at the toe edge, warm the foot. So you breathe and you release the breath into that top contact. And then meeting that space behind you, etc. If um, I haven't got you anywhere close to um, an easy relationship to get to know, then uh, I'd be very happy about that. And those of you that don't have these problems, if you engage with um, if you engage with those things in the simplest of actions, from being on the ground to standing up, you should feel different. Centrally supported below the heart, so the heart is free to rest. Well, I, yes, I've gone over time a bit, so apologies for those of you on a, on a time um, limit. But um, I, I enjoyed that very much. Uh, please do share if you think of it, there's anyone out there who would benefit from. Improving, not improving, uh, benefit from inquiring into the nature of uh, lying down and rolling around, standing up. Um, then do share it. Uh, I want to. I want to spread this work. And um, just to let you know, we've got some things coming up. Um, there's a joint clinic, um, Friday the sixteenth. Um, yes, joint, a joint clinic in Glasgow, Friday the sixteenth. Uh, I have some workshops coming up in Red Hill on the 20th, uh, Saturday, 24th of June. There's two workshops, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. You can come to both if you like. Um, it's cheaper to um, do them individually. Thank you, Judy. Uh, yes, I'm glad that was useful. Um, uh, Sunday, the 25th, there's a, I'm doing a day in Twickenham with a reckoning group. Thank you, Laura. Uh, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad you uh, found me today. Um, this is a Twickenham, there's a workshop Sunday 25th, they're uh, exploring what these conditions are and what can lead to freedom, that sort of thing. And on the same day, uh, women only, there's a workshop being run by Abigail, Abigail Peck, my partner. Uh, she's, she's amazing. If, if you get a chance to um, get to it, it's a pelvic health workshop and um, she's um, sort of breaking into the world of uh, women's health by storm with this stuff. So, um, no, where is it? But that's in uh, Ada Street in London, it's the East End, you know, um, the Broadway Market. So, uh, what else? Uh, we'll be doing the Brighton Festival, so come and say hi. Come and say, come and say hi at the Brighton Festival, July the 8th and 9th. After that, uh, directly after that, 10th to the 17th, I'm in Turkey with a, on a yoga holiday with Tuesday McNeil. Um, uh, I think I think there's some, a couple of spaces left on that if you want to join us for a nice relaxing holiday. I, I do the mornings, um, get you in. No, do I? No, 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 Tuesday does the mornings and she gets you into a, 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 a nice regular practice. And I uh, put, put it apart in the afternoon and to get into the details of things. Um, and then uh, we've got our, our amazing intensive retreat on the second, from the second to the ninth of September, in uh, the, the beautiful in Sabina. It's, um, it's a lovely retreat centre, about an hour from Rome, in Italy. Uh, we, I think, we might have one room left. So, uh, if you're interested in any of those things, go on to the Aquaviva Yoga website, www.aquavivayoga.com. Um, yes, and all the details will be there under the workshops listings. Um, so, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I do really enjoy this way of sharing the work. Um, yes. And uh, I, yes, so I'll, I'll see you, uh, I'll see, hopefully I'll see you next week. Same time, 10.30. Uh, 
and uh, bring questions and, and post it straight as soon as you see me online. Post the questions. It takes a while to come through, and it helps if I can have a focus as soon as possible. So it take, only takes a while, and sometimes uh, half the things take a bit of natural. <laughs> so um, I like to get on with the teaching bits and do um, arrive with questions. And um, yes, yeah, so I'll see you next week. I, I'm I'm also going to be putting on a, a free class, a free, a free yoga course thing. Um, a practice to follow over seven days, and I'll be getting that together pretty soon. And I'll let, let you know when that's up. Um, that'll do us enough talk. Um, thank you so much for coming, and um, I'll see you again. Bye. Namaste. <laughs>